Welcome back to the channel and today we're doing an experiment with Liverpool where we are taking the entire first team as the game starts in your world mode so all the players from Alisson all the way down to Mo Salah will have their contracts terminated. We're going to fast forward to the end of the transfer window, see where some of these players have ended up and we'll see who Liverpool have brought in to replace them. Will they spend a lot of money? with the free wages, will they just promote a lot of players from the youth team, we'll jump ahead right now and find out exactly what their squad looks like at the end of the first transfer window. So we are at the end of the transfer window and as you can see all of these players have been released. We'll run through some of the big names, see who they've ended up. So Allison is away to PSG, Andy Robertson's away to Brighton, bit surprised they only went to Brighton, Trent's away to Bayern Munich, uh, Rattaccio, youth player who was in the first team at the start of the game, he is a, still a free transfer, uh, we'll go through some of the bigger names, Keller is away to Manchester City, good move for him, Mo Salah is also away to PSG, uh, Simicast also a PSG player now, Kanate away to Manchester City, Jordan Henderson is away to Atletico Madrid, uh, Connor Bradley, he is still a free agent, Joe Gomez is now away to Atletico Madrid as well, a lot of players going to similar clubs here. Uh, Harvey Elliott is away to Newcastle United, brilliant, brilliant pickup by them. Alex McAllister, also away to Manchester City. Diego Jota, away to Real Madrid, brilliant move for him. Uh, Darwin Nunes, he is the first player we've seen move over to Saudi and he is away to Al Etifak uh, with Steven Gerrard. Luis Diaz, again away to Newcastle United. Uh, Dominic Shobzlai, away to West Ham. Uh, Virgil van Dijk is also away to Saudi Arabia on £825,000 a week to Al Ali. Curtis Jones, he is also away to Bayern Munich along with Trent. Uh, Joel Matip is away to PSG, like a fair few of them. Fabinho, another player away to Atletico Madrid. Thiago, he's injured so he's still a free transfer, he'll be a great pickup by someday. And then last we'll look at is Cody Gakpo who is away to PSG as well. Now take a look at the Liverpool first team, see what they've brought in. So we'll quickly run through them all, as we've done in an alphabet order. So we have Asmir Begovic here, um, ex-Everton player, goalkeeper, probably. He's their domestic cup goalkeeper, so he'll not get much game time. Uh, Lucas Beltran has been signed from River. Plays a striker, 22 year old, got plenty of room to grow, good pick up there. Uh, Ivan Cavallero, ex-Fulham and Wolves player, can play either wing. Uh, Kieran Dewsbury Hall has been brought in from Leicester City. Bain Doak, the, the young Scotsman, has been promoted from the youth team. Ross Graham has been signed from Dundee United by the looks of it. Yeah, just a French player. Isaac Hayden's come in. Not really who I would have went for if I was Liverpool in this situation, but again, depends what their kind of wage situation was like at the end of the players' contracts leaving. Uh, Stephen Mavidi has come in. Another player that can play on the left wing, looks very good at 25 years old. Uh, Tyler Morton, another player that's been promoted. Uh, Jarrell Kwanza, another promoted player there. Calvin Ramsey, another player, Scottish right back that they've promoted to the first team. Uh, Joe Rodon has come in from Tottenham. Uh, Robert Sanchez, instead of moving to Chelsea in this game, has moved to Liverpool from Brighton. Dion Sanderson has come into the club. Uh, Malang Sarr has been signed as well. Islam Slomani, the man up front, he is an important player. They may struggle if he is their starting striker. Uh, Seth Vanderberg still here. Uh, Steven Alzac, the central midfielder, brought in from Standard Liège. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, another striking option for them, but again, no. Slomani and Aubameyang might not be the two that you want to pin your hopes on this season. And Stefan Bajetic, if I've butchered that, I apologise, has been promoted from the youth team. He started this save in the youth team, so that's why he is still there. Um, Owen Beck is another player that has been promoted. So there we have it, that is the Liverpool first team going into the season. It's a very thin squad already, so they'll probably have to promote another few players from the youth setup throughout this period. We're now going to fast forward to the January transfer window, see how they're doing in the Cup, see where they're sitting in the league, see if they sign any more players to try and help them um, in their push to try and get further and further up the table, so we'll zoom ahead now. So we're at the 1st of February, the end of the January transfer window, and Liverpool are sitting in 14th place in the league, only 5 points above the drop zone. Take a look, see what's kind of happening. It does appear that Jurgen Klopp has been sacked. He was sacked on the 5th of November, and then Oliver Glasner came in. I believe he's the former, yeah, he's the former Frankfurt manager. We will have a look and see. So 
he was sacked on the 5th of November. We'll take a look and see where Liverpool were sitting on the 5th of November. So, 5th of November, they had just been beaten by Brighton and they were sitting in the last relegation space. Glasner's come in and he has managed, they sat in 17th, sorry, 18th for a long, long time before starting to creep their way up the table and they're currently 14th. In terms of January transfers, is there much to talk about? Luke Thomas has come in from Leicester City. We also have Mohamed Ali Cho's come in. We have Junior Chamedu from Colchester. Not entirely sure who that is myself. Uh, Renan Lodi's come in on loan from Athletic Madrid. And Brian Thayabema has come in. Looking at the squad statistics here, in terms of goals, Lucas Beltran is the man with one goal every two games. Uh, Mavidi, six goals. Cavalero, three. A lot of players on three, two, and one. The goals are not coming for this side. This team need to start scoring goals if they want to reach their ambitions. Uh, Kieran Dewsbury Hall, seven assists though, really good from him. Although he's currently injured, quite long he's injured for in approximately one to two months. Not the worst thing in the world. Take a quick run through of the fixtures. Uh, they're obviously they beat Manchester City two one with a squad which is pretty good to be honest. Uh, in the Europa League, they beat Carabag 2-0, goal, two goals from Ben Doak. They get knocked out in the EFL third round by Tottenham. Beat TSC, the Serbian side, 3-2. Uh, drew with Olympiacos, 2-0 at Anfield. Beat Olympiacos, 2-0 away in Greece. Brilliant result there. Beat Carabag, 3-0. And then again, beat TSC, 3-0. So they will have comfortably won that group, I would imagine. Yeah, five wins, one draw. So Europa League could be in the cards. Um, which would be a massive, massive plus for this season. FA Cup, they won 3-0 in the third round before drawing one each with Oldham uh, away from home in the fourth round. So that replay is sandwiched in between Manchester City and Chelsea, which is not great. Uh, Europa League last 16, not sure the tie yet just because of the playoff round. Clubs still in it. We have Celtic v Villarreal, Inter West Ham, Man United Roma, PSV Olympiacos, Galatasaray take on Bayer Leverkusen, Lens take on Real Betis, Lazio v Lodgeretz and Benfica v Brighton. So already there are a lot of sides here and we will also take a look and see what other clubs will be playing in the next round. So Ren will be there, Sporting, obviously ourselves, Atalanta, Freiburg, Ajax, SK Sturm, eh, Rangers. So you know, it could be a pretty poor season for Liverpool. So Europa League could be a competition that they could win, however, there's still a lot of big sides in there. We'll now fast forward to the end of the season to see how everything ended up for Glasner. As you can see, Liverpool have finished in 15th place, winning 10 games, drawing 7 and losing 21. We'll take a deeper dive into that. We can see they scored 40 goals, conceded 58, finishing on 37 points, 8 points over the drop zone. And as we can see, they won their last two games, which have kind of spare their blushes a wee bit because they could have been much closer to that relegation zone. Even still, finished above Everton, um, however with the 10 point deduction Everton would have finished a wee bit higher. Looking at the squad, any changes? So Lucas Beltran, 14 goals in 38 games, Mavididi, 12 goals in total, Cavalero 7, so goals were a massive issue here, massive, massive issue. Uh, we will take a look and see kind of who was the main player. So obviously, Robert Sanchez played 41 times, um, 47 for Badgetich. Brilliant season from him breaking into the first team. 47 for Malang Sar. Uh, how, what other youngsters got good game time? Tyler Morton played 33 games. Owen Beck played 30. Uh, Van der Berg played 19 in total. Ben Doe played 14 times and nine off the bench. Two goals, two assists for him. Calvin Ramsey played 11 times, starting eight off the bench. Pretty good so far. In terms of the fixtures since we were last here, um, they managed to beat Oldham 2-0 in the fourth round of the FA Cup in the replay before losing five, sorry, before losing in the fifth round 2-1 to West Ham United. And the Europa League, they get a tricky, tricky tie against Inter Milan, lost 1-0 away from home, 89th minute goal from Arturo Martinez, and then won 4-1 at Anfield. Two goals from Pierre Emerick Bemiang in extra time. Brilliant, brilliant result in the end there. They then had Sporting which you might have thought might be a bit easier than Inter Milan. Drew 0-0 away in Portugal before losing 1-0 in extra time to a Cabral goal from Sporting knocking them out. Before the end of the season, having three losses in a row, including a 3-1 loss to Everton, before 
then winning their final two games, 3-0 against Nottingham Forest and uh, sorry, 1-0 against Crystal Palace. Glasner is still the manager. Uh, let's just take a look. He has done not too bad. Ex Frankfurt and Wolfsburg manager, as we said. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fast forward straight to the end of the second season to see if this summer they can build a squad to get them back into European football and back to competing for trophies. It's the end of season two, Liverpool have finished in 13th place, winning 11 games, drawing 15 and losing 12. Taking a deeper dive into the table, they scored 47 times, conceding 49, so scoring more than last season, conceding less than last season, things are going in the right direction for them. Tip of transfers this season, uh, they made the Isaac Hayden deal permanent from Newcastle, Finlay Burns came in from Manchester City, McTarran came in on a free, Rafa came in on a free, Osaze Urogadi, not sure, came in from Celtic, Ike Nuri came in from Wolves, Magicki, not sure who this is, um, came in from Real Madrid, 25 years old, uh, Nicholas Gonzalez came in from Fiorentina, George Hall from Birmingham, Wilfred Nonto, great wee pickup from Leeds United in the January, uh, Jordan Teze, Jean Arias from Porto alone, and Joel Veltman from Brighton. Didn't really sell anybody, but that's because all the players just came, so they wouldn't want to be making the squad any thinner. This season, 18 goals from Lucas Beltram, 6 from Rafa, but then again, another massive drop-off. But the squad is looking a lot bigger, as you can see. In fact, how many players are in their first-team squad? We have a total of 42 players in the first-team squad, not including the, say, three that are in on loan. Uh, Assist-wise, 10. Assists from Rafa, Tyler Morton with 5. So it does look like some of the young players are getting a lot more game time. Tyler Morton started 32 times a season. Bajtich started 30 times. Uh, ben Doak started 12 times a season, 17 off the bench. Uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, only four goals. Not as good as I would have thought. In terms of fixtures, in terms of results, lost 2-1 in the EFL Cup second round, 2-1 to Hull City. Uh, FA Cup third round, lost 3-1. And as you can see, a much sparser fixture list due to no European football and they were actually doing it pretty poorly right up until you would say the March when from March they went and only lost one game at their last 10 winning seven so I wonder where they were sitting so as you can see again they were they weren't as bad as last season in terms of the relegation they were in the relegation spot a couple of times before kind of pulling themselves out to 16th and then the last um, six games of the season, pulled themselves from 16th up to 13th and being a bit safer. Uh, Glasner is no longer the manager though, he has been sacked, um, he start, He finished with a record of a 27% win rate and Vincent Company came in in the 9th of January and he has a 47% win rate. So we have it, Liverpool have struggled to get back to where they were after two seasons losing all of their first team players, it might take a wee bit longer to get there. But, as always, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, what you would do in this situation, what players would you sign, and, as always, subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know which club you would like to see me try this out with next, and if you would like the save game file from this point, just let me know and I can get that arranged for you. See you next time.